Hello my friends, welcome back to another tutorial. This week um, I'm going to paint my last seascape I think for a while. So this is the last series of seascapes. Um, it's going to be a lovely, I hope it's going to turn out lovely, lovely blue seascape uh, with a crashing wave on the front. Uh, we had a vote from Patreon and they picked one so I done the other one for them and I told them I would do this one for YouTube so um, I hope you all like it a lovely seascape with little wiggles coming down inside the crashed wave curling over um, so let's have a bit of fun with this um, I hope you do enjoy it and learn something from it so let's crack on and uh, paint this beautiful seascape I hope you like it uh, and thank you for subscribing I'll see you very soon Okay, my friends, there we go. Let's paint this beautiful seascape. Uh, this will be the last seascape, I think, for a while because we've painted a lot of seascapes in the past couple of weeks. I want to move on to more forestry um, kind of stuff, okay? Trees and stuff like that. And perhaps a couple of subjects like bridges and that kind of thing. So, um, okay, there's a reference photograph. That's lovely, isn't it? And I particularly want to capture the shadow on the wave here. You see the way the wave comes down and it catches the light? towards the end of the wave. I want to particularly concentrate on that. So let's um, let's have a bit of fun with this. Let's see what we can do with this. Now, I'll tell you what colors I have here, okay? Let me just fix my Naples yellow because it's kind of moved on my canvas a little bit. It happens when the paint is a little bit oily. Um, on my palette, rather. Um, it's a paper palette, okay? The colors I have are titanium white, a little burned umber, uh, cerulean blue, phthalo blue, naples yellow, magenta and black. I think a nice simple palette. Nice and simple. Uh, we could perhaps, if we wanted to, add a little touch of crimson to this as well. Just a touch of crimson, I think. And that's it. Let's take a big brush. A nice big brush. This is fairly worn. This is kind of starting to get hard now. It's starting to really become used. And there's not much life left in this, I don't think. So let's start with the sky. I've masking tape across here. Um, I, I actually, I need to do one quick, tiny little sketch of my wave. Let's start with the sand, where the sand comes across here and comes down and it kind of goes across like that. Um, the, all the foam splashing comes along like that. And then the wave itself uh, come, comes along up slightly. Let's, let's make it a little bit interesting. And that's it. <clears throat> okay, let's take some titanium white, a nice dark sky, yes? Let's get some phthalo blue. And I'm going to take a touch of thinners in this with the corner of my brush just to thin that slightly, okay? Tiny, tiny bit. There we go. Phthalo blue, some titanium white, and I'm going to keep a little bit of greeny hue to this, so a little bit of cerulean blue as well. Give that a good mix up. Let's have a look at this now. Okay, I'm going to go with that. So my canvas is just about dry. I left it for about an hour or so. It's pretty much dry, okay? I primed this once. Let's put that across there like that. And the paint that was really moving around lovely on this canvas because it's primed. It makes a huge difference. Little coat of primer. It just, see how easy that's moving along there now nicely. And let's hope it stays nice and dry. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more white in. Lighten it up here slightly. I'm going to use my palette knife as well, okay? Just to get some real texture on this sky. Uh, let's go with some phthalo blue and a little magenta. Darken this as it comes down. Now, I want to add a touch of black as well. Because it's a very rich, dark, kind of a bluey, grey sort of a colour. Okay, that's maybe a little better. A little bit of magenta in there just to keep it nice and warm. Let's go down to the horizon line with that. Right across. I'm softening all these colours together nicely now. Look. Bringing them up, softening them together. Left to right, left to right. Let's take some more cerulean blue. A little white. Pop that in there. And you can really just have a bit of fun with colours in this now as well, okay? You can just add your own colours, add a bit of pink in there if you like. And 
That would be lovely as well. A bit of pink would be nice. I'm going to just keep it nice and simple, okay? For the purpose of this video. Just nice and simple. Soften that across. Now, I want to go nice and dark in this corner over here. Yes? I'm going to take some phthalo blue. A little black. And some magenta. Nice and dark. And that'll make a lovely contrast then with the ocean, I think. Soften that outward there. Look like that. I hope you can see this okay now on camera. Let me just sit back and take a quick look. Okay, yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. I'm going to go darker again. I think it needs to be really, really dark. Down in that corner down there, okay? Lots of black and lots of phthalo blue. Soften it upwards. And soften it upwards. There we go. Now, I'm thinking palette knife. What do you think? I have this urge to pick up my palette knife for some strange reason. Let's just pick it up and let's see what happens. Just take some white and a little cerulean blue. And I'm just going to suggest a little bit of movement in the sky, okay? Because it's just, it looks fairly bland, doesn't it? Let's suggest a little movement in the sky up there. Okay? Creating a nice little cloud. Once you put the paint on and you kind of have your outside shape, okay? Then it's a case of just scraping the knife around and softening the colours in. Like so, like so. Look, just have a bit of fun with it. Okay, there's one. Then I'm going to move to more cerulean blue and a little white again. Making it a bit more bluer this time. I'm going to go up here and just drag some clouds across off in the distance, okay? You can see kind of bits of clouds showing through up there in the distance, can't you? And really it's just about having a little fun with your palette knife, okay? Just dab, 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 look, let's just... Assume there's little clouds popping along here and there. Now, there we go. You could even take a little bit of white if you want and just add a touch of white across here and there, further up in the sky. Look, let's just catch a little bit of light here and there. Now, let me sit back and take a look at this. Oh, that's not bad. I think now next I should soften that with my soft brush, just ever so gently. Soften it outwards. Take away some of those roughness on the canvas look. There we go. Just adding a little bit of atmosphere to the sky, really. That's all I want to do. Catch some of those clouds and move them around. Okay. No, I think that's fine. Nice, simple sky. Let's peel off our masking tape. And we have a lovely, clean line. I love doing that. It's so satisfying, isn't it? Ocean. <clears throat> nice, dark, dark ocean. Okay, I'm going to keep my same brush and I'm going to start with a lovely dark colour. Nice rich dark colour. Let's get some phthalo blue, some black. I want this really, really dark. Now it's very dark up there. Phthalo blue with black and a little magenta. Just to keep it on the kind of warm side. Do you understand what I mean? Let's go up and put a nice dark line right across where they meet, okay?
There we go. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Don't try and get it perfect. Very difficult to get a straight line perfect like this. So if it's a little wiggly or wobbly, don't worry about that at all, all right? Okay, as it comes down, you can see it starts lightening, doesn't it? Let's get some white. And some cerulean blue. I want to take a little hint of Naples yellow as well. And it just adds that little touch of greeniness to the colour. You see that? Bring that down all the way. Down to this line here. And I want to soften it upwards. Take a bit more Naples yellow. So we're getting slightly lighter. And again, soften it around. I'm just kind of jumping around on the canvas, just softening it in. Okay, that's all. Okay, now I'm gonna start moving to a smaller brush. We don't need this large brush anymore, I think. Let's go to a nice smaller brush. We have a nice soft flat here, okay? We just dampen that, give it a clean on my tissue. I always do this just to soften the bristles and let's um, let's start putting some nice darks in here I'm gonna just let's get some little suggestions of waves breaking off the distance okay they love blue and a little black all right just those two colors not too thick and I'm simply going to just go along and Add a little touch of, you see, I'm kind of letting the brush sort of dart around. You see that? Leaning down hard and then lifting off, etc, etc. It's just to create that little bit of movement in the distance, that's all. And you see, we can soften these then with the soft brush afterwards. And then... We'll have a nice soft effect okay you can see what i'm doing i'm just kind of letting it dance around kind of with the edge of my brush just sort of letting it hit and miss now we have a nice little dark bit of a wave coming into view here i'm going to just add a little touch of that i want to take some cerulean blue with some phthalo blue and I'm just going to create a little dark, rich blue wave, just kind of coming along and softening out. You see the way it softens out? Drag it across. Now, a little touch of magenta in that and a touch of white. I'm just going to allow that to disappear, disappear off. So you can see I'm being very, just very loose with my brush. Allowing it to just drag the paint off here and there, not too, nothing too fussy. And we take some more cerulean blue, and I think even just cerulean blue now on its own would be a lovely colour. And I'm going to just pop that in here and there to create some nice greeny waves forming. Just to create some movement on the water, okay? That's all really. A little bit of movement. Now I'm going to take a little black. I'm going to pop a little black in up here on that wave, soften it out. And to be honest, I could have probably done with leaving my canvas dry for another little bit longer. It's still a little touch on. The wettish, wettish side, it's kind of not completely dried in the undercoat. But look, it's fine. It's, it's still working away fine. I'm going to soften these in to make it just that little bit softer. Okay. Now, let me stop a minute and take a look. Step back and take a look. Always step back and take a look at what you're doing. Okay. I'm going to darken that again a little bit up on top. 
I think that really needs proper, proper dark colour. Thalo blue, lots of black and a little magenta. I think that needs proper, proper darkening up here. There we go, let's lift off. Maybe a touch on this side, just along the top there as well. I think that contrast is really nice and I think it really draws the eye to that corner up there. That's a bit better now, isn't it? Now I'll darken as well, just this wave slightly. Drag it across. Bring it down and drag it across. That's how I find creates lovely waves. Right, I'm going to switch brushes. I am going to go to a nice sharp edged brush, okay? Now a small brush like this, my small stubby brush, nice sharp edge. Get some blue. Two of those blues, mix those together. Little bit of turpentine. I want to go nice and green with this. Um, a greeny blue. So I'm going to take some Naples yellow as well. Give that a good mix. Okay, now make sure there's not too much on your brush. Pick up the tip of the brush and let's just start popping a little bit of that colour in here and there. You can see now I'm slowly building up the layers. Okay, that's what I tend to do. I start with darker colours and work my way up. I may have to get a little cadmium yellow just to make this much greener, a bright, bright green. Naples yellow makes it more of a sort of a grey, soft green. So I'm thinking I may have to add just a hint of, of cadmium yellow to my palette. And we can really start going nice and bright then with these colours. So let's do that. Let me find my cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow pale, to be exact. Okay, just a little of that there. Let's take some white. Let's take some cadmium yellow pale. And I'll take a little then of cerulean blue. That should give us a nice bright bluey kind of a green nice and bright now a bit more blue you could probably use phthalo blue as well for this if you like but plenty of white I could try a touch of phthalo as well it's a very whitey blue but it's a hint of green in it isn't there Got a good mix up there now, don't be shy. Let's try this. There, yeah, that's not bad now, is it? Nice bright colour. A lovely ocean colour. One thing to bear in mind is, you see this very bright white edge we have here along that wave? So you really, you still want to keep the contrast of that. So I'm not going to go too, too bright with this colour because I still want to be able to show that very bright line across on top of that wave. So just bear that in mind, okay? If you go too light with the colour, it's just going to sort of disappear into the background. So I'm being very careful now not to go too bright with this colour here. And look, I'm just going to flick it around and let it sort of disappear in here and there. It's just a case of creating some movement in the water, that's all. And I'm using lots of thick paint just on the edge of my brush, you see, and I'm letting it just drag off onto the canvas here and there. Creating some movement. Now I'm going to get some cerulean blue with white. I think just those two colours on their own would be nice. Then I'm going to move, in a minute, I'm going to move to phthalo blue. 
with white. That will give us a much more, I think, a much more luminous, whitey, bluey colour. Let's try it. Phthalo blue with some white. And this should really give us some nice brightness in the ocean. That's a bit better now, isn't it? And we'll go up here and create a bit of movement on some of these waves. A little bit there. Um, again, phthalo blue and some white. You can see I'm using lots of thick paint on this, all right? Only because I want nice solid brush strokes. As I go off into the distance, I'm going to just sort of very lightly dab, 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 you see? Just create little tiny waves breaking off in the distance, not too much. And then they just disappear into that darkness, you see? Okay, now let's stand back again and have another look. That's not too bad. I'm gonna soften a lot of this back in, you see that? I'm just gonna create a nice soft little feeling in this. Now that very bright greeny bluey spot just there, I want to get that in. I'm going to take some more cerulean blue and lots of white with a little cadmium yellow. I want to really get that very bright. You see that bright colour just there? Now again, we're not copying this exactly, okay? We can kind of add our own little colours in if we like. It's our painting, we can do what we like. So let's just pop a nice bright greeny turquoisey colour in there and let it kind of just soften away. Just like that, you see? Let's let it just disappear off. Okay, now I'm then going to take a little white with some Naples yellow. I'm just going to add a little touch of light through this here and there. Look, just to catch perhaps the edge of some waves just starting to get ready to crash in. Yes, just like that. So we're ready for our big crashing wave here, this big crest. This is going to be fun. This is going to be very exciting to try. Um, I'll go back to my flat brush. I'm going to give that a quick clean. It's full of dark paint now, so I need to give this a really good clean. Rub it on that tissue, get all the colour off. And I'm going to start with the darker shades, okay? I'm going to start with a very dark colour. It's... Um, Let's have a look and see what colour we can get now out of this. Let's take some phthalo blue, cerulean blue, a little thinner, and a hint of black. That black will naturally give it that grey, kind of bluey, greeny hue, okay? That little touch of black. It will naturally do that. Let's take some white in that. It's a little bit dark. Again. You see, I'm adding little bits of colour as I go. I don't want to be too perfect with this, okay? I'm just going to try, try colours and see how it goes. Now, I'm going to start with this colour, and I'm going to bring that colour down like so, all the way across. So this, if you like, will be my sort of medium shade, and I put darks and lights through this, okay? So I'm just kind of getting my medium shade now first. I 
I tend to kind of do that. I don't know if it's the right way or the wrong way to do it, but that's just the way I've kind of learned to paint. Now I picked up some of that brighty greeny colour and I'm going to go over to this side. You see it's nice and bright over there. I'm going to bring that down and then this is going to soften into that darker colour. See, I'm going to soften it through just like this. And I'm going opposite sides. So over on this side, I'm bringing it down and out this way. And on this side, I'm bringing it down and out this way. And where they meet in the middle, it will come almost straight down, you see. And then slowly drag them outwards to their respective sides. So left and right. And I find that just gives them more natural because you have to picture, you have to imagine the camera. <clears throat> if you're standing looking at this, you have to imagine you're right in the centre. When you're in the centre, it's going to look like it's coming directly towards you. And left and right, it's going to move opposite directions outwards like this. Okay? I think that gives a much nicer perspective rather than doing it all one direction like this. So I think this gives it a much better perspective. So now we have... A nice dark in there as well. You can see that's a nice kind of a darky, bluey kind of a shade in here. And when I'm doing this now, I am really looking past all of these little white bits. You see these white wiggly lines? I'm looking past all of those. I'm just looking at the background colour, okay? That colour right in the back behind all of those. That's the colour I'm doing right now. I'm just focusing on that. So I'm imagining that those little wiggly lines are not even there right now. I'm just looking past all of that and going right to the background. Looking at that background colour as we go along. Okay, there we go. Nice dark shade over here. I'll take some thalo blue and cerulean blue. I'm just going to start popping a nice kind of a richer blue in just along up here. Bringing it down and out again. Um, okay, now I'm going to clean my brush for a moment. Just give it a quick clean. And I'm going to start going nice and dark in the centre. I'll take some black, cerulean blue and thalo blue. And this needs to be nice and greeny, okay? Greeny, grey, blue. I'm going to go... It's nice and dark in around the middle. I'm just going to go nice and dark in here just for a moment, okay? We can lighten all of this now if we feel we need to, so not to worry. It's just little sections of dark, dark colour. That's what I can see. A bit of cerulean blue as well and the way i'm doing this now is i'm kind of almost dragging the paint off of the brush onto the canvas as opposed to the canvas pulling the paint i'm kind of dragging the paint along and letting it come off here and there onto the canvas nice and dark along there as well And then I'm going to start softening some of these darks in. Now, the next job I'm going to do is take my soft brush and just kind of soften these together a little bit better. And you see the way I'm kind of flicking it outwards like this? So that will then give us the direction as well of the wave. Now, this brush is kind of not perfectly soft. It's a little bit well used. So you can sort of see little lines on the brush, on, on, on the canvas, where it's not completely softening properly. That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll go with what we have. Okay. So I have a lot of my kind of background shades done. Um, I'm going to start adding some lighter colours to this now. Let me find another brush. Hmm. I want a nice flat brush for this. But nothing very big. Do you understand what I mean? Um, I'm going to go with this. A nice new brush. A nice sharp-edged brush. Okay. 
I'm going to start putting in some lights across here. So let's get some white and a little cerulean blue. So it's not pure white, it's a very, very bracy blue. I'll start with this and I'm simply going to go along the edge of that and just let the paint come off, okay? See what I mean? So I'm really just separating this from that background. That's the idea. Just to create that nice bright section just along the top and we can use detail like uh, detail brushes now as well for all of this thing but let's just first for now use our flat brushes and i'm just going to simply start lightening all of this now i want to get a nice bright greeny color i'm going to take some cerulean blue with a little cadmium yellow and lots and lots of white okay so we have a very rich bright greeny kind of a color and I'm going to start putting that color in here. And that's kind of to suggest, really, I suppose, that kind of glow. Do you know that glow that you get under the wave, the light coming through the wave? That's what I'm trying to achieve. Whether it works or not, I don't know, but I'm going to try it anyway. Go like that. Okay, down like that. Clean the brush and start again and it's almost kind of all the way across really isn't it pretty much it's just nice and light up there i'm going to pull those down now don't worry about you see those little brush marks try not to worry about those we can soften those out in a moment okay they're only small things we can fix those I know a lot of people don't like seeing brush strokes on their paintings. They want it all lovely and soft. Sometimes a few little brush strokes here and there is quite nice, I think. It just adds to the painting. Give the painting a bit more character. Okay, I'm going to add some more of that down here. So now we're working, kind of working up our lights. Do you understand what I mean? So let me clean my brush now and go nice and bright up here. I'm going to take some white, a little phthalo blue, and then some cadmium yellow. That should give us a nice bright shade. Then I'll take another soft brush. Let me find another one. I have another one here somewhere. Okay, I have another one here. Let's try this. Let's try softening them together with this. Just getting rid of some of those brush strokes, okay? Dragging it down in a little curve. And again, that's giving us the lovely direction of the water, isn't it? Let's see what we will do next. Um, I'm thinking you now, I'm thinking, uh, perhaps get a detail brush and start putting in little details. Yes, should we try that? Let's get a nice pointy brush. Let's get some white. And I think just white with a hint of cerulean blue. The tiniest little hint. I don't have much thinners in this now, okay? It's really thick paint. And I'm just going to go along and look, just catch the edge of the wave like that. And you see, just letting your brush kind of dance around, really, just makes it nice and random. 
okay and you can if you like obviously you can use a little palette knife or something for this if you like um, that would be another lovely way to paint all of this putting lots of thick paint on um, but you know I just think this has a much neater effect or something it just you see that little curve I love doing things like that it's just so so nice with a small brush it's starting to come out isn't it it's just starting to show a little at a time there's no rush with this you really should take your time um just don't go crazy okay a little wiggle like that let it disappear up okay remember just have fun that's the most important thing just you have to enjoy it if you don't enjoy it it's it's pointless for me if i don't enjoy what i'm doing um i get frustrated you know there's, there's no point now i'm going to start putting in the slightly darker colors of that kind of crashing of you, know, you see those wiggly lines underneath that wave i'm going to start putting those in okay i think i'll keep my same brush i'm going to mix a slightly darker shade of blue i'm going to go with some phthalo blue and i'll take some thinners in this phthalo blue with a hint of cerulean blue perhaps i want to go slightly darker than a whitey blue okay but i still want to show it on this I'll take a hint of magenta as well. Now, if you take too much magenta, just grab another touch of blue, okay? We don't want it too pinky. Let me try this. All right? So let's just go like that. And you see all kind of these random lines. And I'm rubbing my brush after every time I do this, okay? On my my tissue, I'm just giving my brush a little rub just to keep it nice and clean. Now, Let's step, step back and just take a look at this. Okay, I think we're getting there. I may have darkened this ever so slightly. Just slightly. But I still want to show it against that dark background. Does that make sense? So it's a tricky combination. Um, you know, if you go too dark, it's going to blend in. If you go too light, it's going to look too bright. So it's, I suppose, finding a balance. And it's basically just lots of wiggles and just kind of let your brush dance around again. Okay. But let's just keep going and see what happens. And you just do what you feel is okay for you. All right, don't try don't try and paint a photograph that's what i'll say 
you know um, a lot of people they just try too hard to paint photographic pictures and you know it i just don't have the patience for painting photographs it's for me i i just don't see the, the interest in painting something to look like a photograph okay it's a beautiful study it's fantastic to see but um i think i think you kind of lose the spontaneity of painting if you're going to be painting something to look like a photograph for me i think you lose the enjoyment that's what i'll say and i want to enjoy my painting i don't want to sit for two hours painting a tree that for me is just i wouldn't enjoy myself if i was painting like that but look if that's what you like to do that's what you like to do but i just find that painting something loosely like this is much more enjoyable i really do i enjoy painting like this just creating nice paintings using just basic techniques nothing too fancy now just add a little dark color here and there just want to darken some of these as they come up that little bit higher Then I'm going to go really nice and dark. Here and there, in between some of them, okay? So you can see what I'm doing, it's just simply wiggling the brush around. Letting it soften here and there. Okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do, this should really kind of brighten the, the whole thing up. I'm going to simply take some white and a little Naples yellow, perhaps. Okay? Let's try it. White, Naples, Naples yellow makes a very bright white. And, and then, I'm going to start from the bottom and start adding little lights and softening them up. Okay? You see that? Now I'm cleaning my brush each time because I want to keep that brightness. So let's try here, okay? So I'm going to start at the bottom and leave it sort of disappear in. You see? And then we start really catching some of the lights on these And my brush is probably a little bit on the big side for this, but I will go to a small detail brush as well and just add little tiny touches with a small brush. But it's just about showing the light catching the ends of these, okay? That's really what I'm trying to show, the light just catching the ends. The light's coming across catching these beautiful little wave crashing over okay let's stop at that now and take a look now i can see that looks a bit kind of bright on camera because whichever way this camera is working it just really shows off the brights now i'm just going to soften some of those outwards and upwards okay i just want to lose 
just want to lose some of them. Now the next thing I want to do is just come down and put a nice bright across here, right? First. This is the start of this wave crashing over now. Then I'm going to just kind of soft, start softening this back into the wave slightly. You see that? Just here and there. Now I will kind of work away on some of those. I'm going to get a small brush egg, for example, and I'm going to go back in and just start adding a few more of these, just refining them a little more. That's all. Show them off a little bit. Then I'll take some white, bright white, and I'll just go back and redo some of these. Now, if you feel you can do a different technique to this, then do, please do. Um, you know, it's all about learning. And we learn a little bit about everything when we paint. We learn new techniques. You know, if you, if you feel, oh, I can do something a little bit better or whatever, vice versa. You know, please do, because that's what it's all about. It's all about just really enjoying yourself and enjoying your painting. That's what I'll say. Okay, now I'll stop there. I'm just gonna fill in this lovely ruffled foam that we have here, okay? I'm gonna start with a slightly darker color. I'll go with cerulean blue, little white, and a touch of magenta. I'm going to fill that in for now. And for painting stuff like this, I do like to just simply go around in little circles. I find it gives a lovely feeling, a lovely movement to the water. I think it really does. A little bit of grey through there as well. Pop a little grey through there. We have lots of different colours. I can see lots of pinky colour as well down towards the front here. I don't know if you can see that on the picture there, but there's a lot of pink going through these waves. It's like a shady pinky colour. Let's bring this down a little bit more. Soften it very gently around the edge. Then we'll start putting on our nice brights, okay? Now I'll stand back again and take a quick look at this. Yeah, that's not bad. It's not bad. It's not fantastic, but it's not bad, is it? That's the way I like to see it. It can always be a little better, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with the way this is turning out. I'm going to take another dry brush. It's a very, it's well used, okay? It's just a well used brush. I'm going to start pulling in some of these lights. I'm going to take some white. I do need more white on my palette. 
little bit of white there. I hope you're enjoying this, by the way. I really do. I'm going to take that with um, a little of the greeny color, I think. And what I'm going to do then to create all these ruffled kind of waves, I'm just simply going to go around in little circles like this. You see? Round and round in little circles. So I'm going to slowly then start getting brighter and brighter and brighter with this technique. Get a bit more white. And maybe even use a smaller brush as well. But for now, look, I'll just try this. I'll just stick with this brush for now. Um, as it comes over here now, there's a lot of rich white kind of foaming around over there, isn't there? Around in little circles. I love it to dance around. And you can see that I'm not mixing... I'm not mixing them in a huge amount. Do you understand what I mean? So I'm not kind of really going round and round too much. I'm just creating the kind of ruffled look first. And then I start adding real proper highlights to all of this. Now I can see we have a lot of shading in here as well. A lot of shaded areas. I'm going to take some black and some magenta. I'm going to come down here and just start adding little shaded areas here and there. Okay. Particularly at the front here, there's a lot. I know this looks a bit strange for now, but I will be cutting in front of a lot of these. Okay. We'll be kind of going right in front of some of these shortly. I'm just getting in these little shaded areas that you can see. Now, I'll move to a smaller brush. I'm going to get a nice small rough brush. You see that? It's not perfect. It's just nice and rough. And I'm going to go into some white. Let's just go for white and perhaps a little Naples yellow. Just to brighten it that little bit. So I'm going to start. I always tend to start from the right-hand side. I don't know why. I'm going to start here and just start putting in all these little circles okay I'm just going to keep going like this little circles keep cleaning the brush you have to keep your brush nice and clean for this. And create another one. And it's just a case of going along like this and cutting in front of the previous layer with your brush. Okay? So you can see then the colours are kind of mixing together as well. And that's fine. That is perfectly fine. Now, if you're not comfortable with this, you could just get a palette knife and just create lots of brightness with your palette knife as well. I still may, um, but I think it's good practice to use a brush like this. It just broadens your skill. Um, it just forces you to take your time as well. And you know, not try and paint everything in just one go with a palette knife or a big brush, but just take your time 
and um, enjoy it you know what i mean just practice 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 and you'll always learn something new each time that's what i love about painting you know i i've learned one or two little things here myself and i'm sure that will help me going forward and that's what it's all about Let me just step back now for one moment to take a look at this. Now I will add a few darks in a moment. Just a few nice darks. But first I'm just going to keep going with this. Now I am going to switch to a palette knife. Okay. Let's try the palette knife and let's see what we can do with that. Let's take a bit of white on the edge of our palette knife and let's just start creating some movement. Okay. Isn't that nice? Just letting the knife or the canvas rather drag the paint off of the knife here and there. And that creates a nice rough look, doesn't it? And I'm just very gently touching the canvas. I'm not really pressing down too hard at all. Just nice and gently. I've got a couple of bigger ones as well. And we could do a nice big one down here really put plenty of paint on and you see what I'm doing I'm just really putting my palette knife around in little circles okay that's all I'm doing try it it's a lot of fun Okay, I am now going to go along the end of this just to give a nice dark, dark colour down at the bottom down there. I'm going to take some black and a little crimson. And with that dark pinky colour, I'm just going to go along the end here first, okay, and just block in this area just to finish the edge off. That's all. Like so. I'll do another nice bit over here. Nice dark section over here. Take a bit more black. I made a slight mistake there, but that's fine. Look, we can just soften it in. Now, what I'm going to do with this is soften it up into the water. You see that? I'm just going to catch that colour and kind of soften it up here and there. With my brush. Just very lightly and very loosely as well. I got some burnt umber as well. And soften that right up. Look, leave it disappear. Round the little circles. Like that. Keep going. We get this nice soft colour going up into those little waves turning around. 
no i'm just going to keep stopping and taking a look step step back and then take a look okay now we could go with a bit of darker color here and there on some of that couldn't we there's a little bit of darker shades going through here and there i'm going to darken it down slightly it's a bit bright isn't it i think it needs to be slightly darker i'm going to get some nice dark bluey colors and pop them in here just go around the little circles squiggle it just let the brush dance around because when you see the next step now this will make sense a little bit of shading here and there okay now let's go back to our knives and we pick up some of this white and then i'm going to simply go around the tops of these darks and soften it downwards into the dark look You see, you can actually blend with a palette knife as well. You don't have to use a brush or a soft brush for blending. You can use a palette knife to kind of just gently bring them together. I'm going to cut in front of one here. See what I mean? And down here, I'm going to cut in front of one as well, down here, that dark, just to add another layer. Of water so we're pushing them back then slightly Now let's move on and do our sand and we can just kind of come back to all of this then and do another little bit as we go but let's just get the sand in and i think once that's in it'll give us a better picture of where we are i hope i kept this nice and simple for you now not too complicated i'm going to take some burnt umber and i'm going to take some crimson uh, some magenta this is very pinky you now this color and a little black then some white it's a very soft pinky gray isn't it but the burnt umber i think will just give it that browny hue that we need okay let's try this there i think that's good i'm going to paint this in here and just fill all of this in I'll grab more white if you don't mind and let me get some more color let me get some turpentine first so again some white some magenta and i'm going to use that bright color there i think that's more like what we have on the picture isn't it go along here like that soften that across So, I'm going to take a touch of Naples yellow just to warm it slightly, give it a bit more of a sunlit colour. Go in under that. Okay, now I'm going to darken as it comes down, I'm going to darken it slightly. So, some black burnt umber and a little magenta okay i'm going to start darkening just towards down here as it comes down a bit a bit more magenta slightly more on the pinky side and soften that very gently upwards look really soften it together i'm 
and I might go even richer down here maybe a bit of crimson as well just to make it slightly darker down in this corner I think a little bit of shade like this always helps um, it just adds something to a painting now the next thing I'm going to do with this is simply simp it's actually simple really I'm going to take some white okay I'm going to get another brush here clean brush take some white and I'm simply going to drag some white a whitey blue okay I'm going to simply drag little white like this down just here and there it's really just to suggest the highlights of that water okay and those waves crashing down um, there's a little bit of light kind of catching just here and there maybe a bit of blue come on let's get some blue in there now when that's done I'm going to soften this down with my soft brush pull all that down then I'm going to soften across very gently look that gives you a nice simple little suggestion of a reflection doesn't it I think that works then I'm going to take some dark color and I'm simply going to just kind of cut across this with the suggestion of like a bit of water or sand or something you know there's a little bit of you can see that little bit of darkness just kind of culling across it here and there like that then I'll do the very same with some white on my brush or on my my palette knife rather I'm, I'm mixing my words up today very bad for that I apologize I'll take a little bit of white pop a little bit of white across there as well you can see there's a hint of blue in this color as well just to show little bits of the water kind of coming down onto the sand that's all the next thing I'm going to do now is just refine the dark edges down at the back of those down right at the bottom you see those dark edges way down there I'm just going to refine some of those down under that water so let's take our detail brushes and refine some of these you may find this easier if you let your canvas dry okay but I just kind of tend to like to work wet into wet I've always been like that um, I just love the feeling of wet into wet it just feels more natural especially in a painting I just find wet into wet is a more natural feeling so there's no harsh kind of lines as such there is a few but there's not a huge amount of harsh lines okay let's stand back and take a look I don't think that's that bad at all I really don't now there's one little a few little bits that I might try and tidy up a little bit so for example up here I just want to get my knife and just add a bit of movement up there perhaps just go along the top of this 
just adding a few more little highlights here and there. I think we're pretty much finished, my friends. We have a nice little, nice little painting here, don't we? I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, look, there's areas which I think could be much better. If I sat here for another two hours, I could probably improve some areas. But I think, you know, look, it's never going to be perfect as far as I'm concerned. As far as, you know, the way I think is, you know, no painting is completely perfect. Um, you know, it's it's perfect to the person painting it, yes, of course. But, you know, there's always going to be something which can be improved on slightly. So don't beat yourself up if you don't think your painting is perfect, okay? It's a painting. It's not supposed to be perfect. Oil paintings and watercolours, acrylics, they're all paintings. They're created by a person's hand. So they're never going to be perfect, okay? Just accept that. As soon as you accept that, the much easier and the much more fun you're going to have when painting. Well, I'm going to stick a little bird in up here, a little seagull. Just to add a little hint of life to the painting. There's a little bit of white. Let me take a little touch of black. Like that. A little suggestion of some legs and the head. You could add a couple if you wish. It's completely up to yourself. Um, so there we go, my friends. I'm happy with that. A little painting finished. And I think we've captured the dark kind of relatively okay. Okay, it, it could be probably a little bit better. But um, I'm kind of happy enough. I, I, I am. Now, I might actually add slightly darker colour just a little bit under that wave. I can see, you see, when you step back, you can see all of these little things. And when you're up close, you don't spot them as much. But I think just a little dark in under here may help, just a little. Just kind of tapering off. And maybe even a slightly darker. Just tapering off over at a kind of an angle, okay? I think that might help. I'm happy with that. I've one more thing to do, my friends, and that's just a sign, okay? A painting is not a painting until it's signed. And it's not finished until it's signed. Because when, when you sign a painting, you get the feeling, okay, it's finished. And you tend to leave it alone, I find, when it's signed. I'm going to move the camera back and stick a frame on this. I have a lovely frame made. One which I made earlier. I do apologise now for this moving around. And I'm going to adjust the camera slightly. Let's stick a frame up. There we go. One frame finished. And that's it. How about that, my friends? Do you like that? I think that's lovely. I'm very happy with that. And there we are. Finished. So, on that note, I shall thank you so much for tuning in. Um, the last seascape, I think, for a little while anyway. We'll concentrate on some other subject matter going forward. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe if you would like to see lots and lots of other new um, colourful paintings. You can support me by popping over to Patreon. There's lots of extra tutorials there for you if you want to. Just pop over, take a look, see what you think. Something might catch your eye. In the meantime, have fun with this. Um, do you know, just try maybe simplify it a little bit more, if you wish. If it's a little bit too detailed for you, or maybe a little bit too complicated to follow, just simplify it yourself. Use a palette knife or just a big brush or something. But most importantly, have fun. Have fun and enjoy it, okay? I'll see you very soon again, my friends. Thank you so much. 
happy painting and god bless.